Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Okay, this is kind of a new format. Uh, I guess you got my charts up. I, I definitely have your shots. The, the voice we still got to work on, evidently, but we get the shots. So just give it the best you can, and we'll do the same on our side. We'll get this done, Tim. I was on vacation right, last week. So. It's I'll get it done this week for sure, and I apologize. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, yes, Good. we can. All right, yes. all right. Let's, let's, let's go to the first chart. Okay. And uh, actually, I, I'm. I was a lot more bearish a couple of weeks ago or a week and a half ago than I am right now. But, uh, you know, the first chart is I got stuff um, shaded in light pink, the times uh, of days up in a row. Uh, right. Back in May, yeah, we had 10 days up in a row. Then June, we had seven days up in a row. July, seven days. Then August, we had eight days in a row. And, you know, September, we had seven days in a row going into um, I don't know, it was, uh, September 16th or something. Yeah, you know, you know, seven days in a row. What a trend, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty powerful market. You, this is kind of rare to get these many up days in a row uh, for a constant since May. Yes. And, and some, but in all cases, when you get at least seven days up in a row, uh, Sometimes the market will, will, will flip sideways for a short period, then continue higher. Something you know, at the time in July, we hit that high and we went down for you know about a month or so. Then we went back up, then we went eight days in a row. Then in August, and we had a you know approximately about a fifty percent pullback. Uh, went right into uh, another seven days up in a row. We had higher highs, but what I'm saying here is normally when you get seven or more days up in a row, the market usually does a lot of times hit a higher high, sometimes not very much of a higher high, uh, and sometimes a little bit higher high. Okay. But we always go into some sort of a consolidation. We either flip sideways for a little while, yeah, then hit higher possibly. Uh, but I, I'm thinking um, we're going to pull back here. Okay. Uh, after seven days up, we went up uh, on July 19th. We uh, spiked up. And uh, we hit a higher high, and then since July 19th, which is like Thursday, we haven't done anything. We just basically stayed here. Yes. But if you notice the bottom window, uh, which is the SPX fixed ratio, Okay. every time the S&P hits a higher high, you want that ratio to hit a higher high, and that's yes. not happening here. Right. Uh, so so you got a little bit of divergence going on. So let's flip to uh, chart two. You can actually see it a little bit. Okay, better. I have it. Yep. Uh, okay, basically we've been diverging since July. The bottom window is the SPY, the top window is the SPX fixed ratio, and you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, so the ratio doesn't really lie. You know, the ratio is just a, actually a kind of a put call. Well, it is a put call. The VIX, rather, is a put call um, indicator. Yes. It kind of measures premiums of the puts and calls, and and so it's kind of a similar indicator. Uh, so I guess the smart money right now is being careful. You know, they're they're not really bearish. The reason why they're not really bearish, you know, because the VIX is pretty still pretty low. Everything below 17 is usually a good intermediate term sign. We're coming in a little less than 16. Uh, so they're not hugely bearish here. They're more fairly neutral. You know, you know, it's interesting, Tim, is that for a higher market, we know that's what you need, right? <laughs> you need right, people sure nervous you need. and you need to go sideways building cause yeah. so this is intriguing man yep yeah we're, we're gonna have something here pretty slick let's flip to this is where let's get down to the nitty-gritty let's go to chart three okay i have it and this is yeah this is what i'm looking at. i did this chart a couple hours ago and it's probably gonna remain the same but i do you know we we both do we we're kind of a uh, you and I are kind of uh, uh, volume volume junkies, uh, no doubt. That's yeah, right. Junkies <laughs> or you know experts, at least you are, anyhow. Yeah. But well, you are anyhow, all you, big time. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyhow, on July nineteenth, which is that first dot of the line. Okay. Uh, that was the highest high so far in this year uh, until today. We tested it high today. Uh, 
we did break above that previous high we had. Actually, that was July 19th. I probably should have put a date there. Okay. And we're testing that high right now. And it's, 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 you know, when you test a previous high and you close below the previous high and volume shrinks at least 10%, that previous high is going to be resistance. And today's volume, in my opinion, we got, you know, 20 minutes to go. We're nowhere near um, July 19th high volume, which is last Thursday's volume. We're going to, we're not even coming 50% probably. No, it's, it's so pretty. You, the contraction is huge, man. Huge, no doubt. Yeah, contraction yeah. is huge. And you notice when you break, which we did touch a new high today. Uh, we didn't hold it so far. Yeah. But you need to sign a strength through a previous high to have to have confirmed the yes. breakout to the upside. Well, here we're doing the opposite. We can't even get to the previous high, and volume's pathetic. Yeah, it so is. So probably we're not going to get through the previous high. So what that means, if you can't hold above the previous highs, you'll go down to the previous swing low well the previous swing low is last thursday or uh, be what last wednesday's low anyhow is where that gap for i see it yep i see it yeah so i'm thinking at a minimum we go down to that gap okay now, we test the gap on higher volume that means that gap will not hold support and will go lower the next lower thing is basically the september low which is Again, back down around that 540 area. So it depends. If we do go in the gap, which I think we will, if you test that gap on lighter volume, that gap's going to hold support. Well, the volume on the gap is last, is last Thursday's trading range. So, yes. uh, uh, so I, I'm thinking that gap's probably going to hold. You know, the numbers will, will tell the story, but, you know, you got the VIX. Showing a bearish divergence, the SP, you know, SPY VIX showing a bearish divergence, and so I, I'm thinking we're going to have some uh, short-term consolidations uh, still here. No, so, no, no uh, doubt. Now, now stay right there because you know, and then you know, you got to remember something, folks. Okay, you know, Tim has been walking us through this market, and you know, these indicators are so cool; it's amazing. And in particular, on a longer-term basis, we have still have that. Zag, zag breath indicator that we're going to be higher. So yep. this is really cool, man, no doubt. Tim, stay right yep. there. We're going to have a quick break. We're going to come right back. We have the Dow right now, folks, uh, up 26. NASDAQ is up 85. S&Ps are up 7.5. And, and one of the biggest moves out here today, folks, is the silver market. Silver's up a buck 40. It's about time. 32.49. We have uh, gold. The gold is not stopping. Up 33 bucks at 26.85. Don't forget to get hold of Tim every trading day at ORD. O -R -D hyphen oracle.com that's odd hyphen oracle.com tim and i come right back folks. welcome back folks tim or tom my brand we do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here we have the dow industrial's up 25 nasdaq's up 91 s and p's are up uh nine and tim i am on i think i'm on yeah the third sure. shot yep yeah true sure, great no, you brought this wag breast thrust indicator i think that was triggered back in uh i forget when that was but anyhow, it did predict the market, a bull market going forward is kind of a longer term indicator. We also talked about uh, on your show, the uh, RSI hitting above 80. Yes. Uh, back, back at this actually was July 10th. Yep. Uh, the RSI uh, hit 81.98. It's almost 82. And previous times that has happened, the market always hit a higher high. But a lot of times you had a short-term consolidation, and that's what we had starting around July 10th. We went down, kind of went sideways. But a lot of times when the RSI, uh, which I wish I had put that chart up here, but I forgot to. But anyhow, when it does, RSI does hit over 80, actually above 80, but below 85, it usually marks the halfway point of the move. So that July 10th was actually... Uh, pretty much where we are right now, just a smidge below, but pretty much where we are. So in a nutshell, we're probably halfway done of this rally uh, that, that uh, preceded it. So I haven't done those numbers yet, but this probably sideways pattern that's been going up and down from July to our current price, even though it's, we're kind of setting at a new high here, this sideways pattern is probably the halfway point of the next move up. So my opinion, we're going to move it at least another 10% higher from around current levels. So yes, listen. I think they're going to get, yeah. When you brought so, it up, 
uh, that's why I brought it up again. I think it's that important, folks, okay? Because uh, we'll all, you know, we know that a, if you can get a longer term range, which is very hard to get, but that indicator is a s sweet indicator. And then between that and the RSI, and, and I can tell you, Tim, you know, how this market's trading, I think people, uh, you know, I think it's the building cause, man. Uh, yeah, we can pull back a little, but I got a feeling that, and then, and then on me, it's fundamentally because this dollar looks like it's going to go break lows, Tim, the dollar index. And if that okay. breaks lows, that dollar wants to go to 89. That dollar goes to 89, we're going to see the S&P go to the moon and gold and silver go to the moon. Yeah, because that's 10 points down from where we are right now. And there's nothing in between right. it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, okay, if you're going to go, you're going to go. So it's, I really love that indicator. And, you know, what you've taught us about it, particularly when Tim just brought up this halfway move, folks, okay? Um, go back to some of the other shows because he shows the halfway move. You showed us those halfway moves, Tim, when this they was happening before, which was so cool. And 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 when you put it yeah, together, it, keep it. it seems unbelievable, which makes it even more believable. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's all these indicators. I mean, these are obscure indicators. I kind of just observed them over the years. And, yes. And you know, trouble is, a pattern keeps repeating and repeating and repeating, and so you you, you quit doubting it. You know, right. you take it as a verbatim. Right. So. Right. But you know, they, they have a chance to be proven wrong before the year's out, and let's see that happen. Yeah. But right now, I'm I'm leaning. Uh, you know, the bigger trend's bullish. So. Yes. Uh, cool. You want to get to the gold market? Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. All right. This is uh, kind of a, been showing this chart on okay. and off uh, on your show for a while. It's just a short term chart. Yeah. It's fairly short term, but it can be short term. But anyhow, it's a momentum chart. And and the bottom window, uh, anyhow, the top window is a GDX. Bottom window is a GDX up down volume percent with the 50 day average. So it measures just the up down up volume down volume takes 50 day average, and in a nutshell, uh, when up up volume on the 50 day average is above zero, the market is in an uptrend. When it's below zero, the market is in a short term downtrend. And we've been pretty much above zero on this indicator. That's all of the light green shaded I see. areas yep. are time. When this indicator is is above zero, we're coming in. Well, I made this chart uh, a little over plus 10, and it's been holding in that vicinity since April. So it's April, May, June, July, you know, it's what, yep. five months now. Big number. So, yeah, yep. yeah, big number. And it really is not showing a great weakness from what I can see. And if you look at the top chart, we're starting to break above uh, the old high of uh, 2022. Um, we're up against that high. Well, we're actually breaking that high right now. So. We're kind of breaking out of this sideways trading range, and if you, and you know the Weisskopf method, you know the cause. Yes. Because you know really since 2000 mid 2020, really the, the markets kind of GDX just in general moved sideways here. It didn't really go anywhere. I mean, went went from 20 22 to 40. I mean, which is a big range, but yep. in, in a base the bigger time frames, it was just a sideways market. So and then last week, started. you know, last week we had a huge expansion of volume on the GDX. I mean, we did uh, yeah. 122, yeah, 122 million. The week before was cool too. It was 102, and then we were taking swing points out that had uh, well, 108. But the 122 we needed, but that's pretty cool. I mean, we're getting more buyers, man, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I think, in, in a nutshell, you know, we were talking last fall, I think. And we were talking kind of bullish, and the market kind of went dead there a little bit. I yes. don't think it won't. And, uh, and I thought, well, maybe, you know, the indicator failed or something. And I had several different indicators kind of flashing the same sign as it was bullish, but the market was doing squat. And, and that kind of out of nowhere, you know, it got into rhythm, and, and finally everything did what it was supposed to do, I guess you might say. No, I so agree. Now, I was nervous, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I was too. I'm thinking, this is, this is supposed to be, you know, decent here. And, yeah. And it was just kind of just doldrums. Yeah. And uh, it was quite before the storm, I guess you Gotta might say. I love it. And, I know. Yeah. So everything's starting to pop up. If it, I don't have it shown, but the bullish percent index, which measures, which is measures the percent of stocks, there are point for your bicycles up around 85%. Okay. Which is, 
85 percent of the stocks on Goldmeyer's index are on buy signals. So that's a relatively strong market. So and then I, hey, I get the last 60. shot up now, Tim. The HUI right. with the talk to me about this. All right. Quick chart. Uh, OK, this is a HUI gold ratio monthly chart. Uh, in a nutshell, I just put a Bollinger Band on it. Yes. And when you're above the Bollinger Band's bullish, when you're below it's bearish. And when you get signals of this type, they're usually a year and a half or longer. And the last one was triggered, um, I think it was June of this year. It doesn't catch the exact bottom or the exact high, but catches, but keeps you in the trend. Right. And uh, so this, and I have other long, month, monthly indicators that gave buy signals also. But this is a good one. In other words, uh, the HUI, or the gold stock right now, is outperforming gold and has been doing that since... Uh, first of june and again these signals last a year year and a half or longer so at minimum we rally into uh late next year if it's if it just the minimum but it could last as long as four years so four years added on to june of this year uh you come in what june of 2028 holy so cow that's <laughs> the longest so it could be i think it's similar to 2000 so we'll have to i, I agree listen man me and you are some of the only gold bulls at that point. I remember doing the gold shows, even the gold CEOs. I just had Fred uh, Ernest on from the CEO. I mean, he's bullish, but I remember in 2002, I'd have CEOs on. They were bearish, and we were bullish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Good listen, man, days. you have a great one, safe one. Look forward to speaking to you on Thursday, Tim. All right. Love you guys. Take care. Thanks I love you, man. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.